Thank you for those that have joined on time. We'll just give it one or two minutes before we get started. Okay, let's get started. So welcome to the Helix webinar series. Today's session is on making your data smarter with BMC Helix Log Analytics. This is a pre-recorded session, mainly so we can get all the information in and have the live Q&A at the end. Roughly will be around 43 minutes and then we will open up for live Q&A. If you have any questions during this uh, webinar, please put them into the Q&A section of Zoom. Thank you. To today's webinar where we'll be talking about our BMC Helix log analytics product. The title of today's webinar is Make Your Data Smarter with BMC Helix Log Analytics. I'm delighted to be joined by my colleagues Anuj and Graham who will be taking you through today's webinar. Anuj, would you like to introduce yourself and say hello to everyone? Yep, sure. Thanks, John. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Anuj Gupta. I work as a principal product manager in BMC's digital service and operations management business unit and looks after the observability and AI of product line. In this role, I'm looking after the product roadmap uh, execution, as well as working with the customers to understand the requirements and solve the problems. In today's presentation, I'm going to discuss about using the Helix log analytics with AI ops to solve the IT operations monitoring and troubleshooting. And before I do that, let me hand over to my colleague, uh, Graham, who is also co-presenting with me. Uh, for this uh, webinar. Thanks, thanks, Anish. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Graham Brown. I'm one of the pre-sales solution engineers at BMC in the UK. I've uh, been working with um, things like uh, monitoring and observability and capacity um, products for probably the last 20 or so years. So I've um, got a lot of experience in, in this area, and uh, it's good to be involved in the, the, the new areas around um, log analytics and so on. So later, in the presentation today, I'll be going through and providing the demonstration as, as part of today's uh, event. Thanks, uh, Graham, and thanks, uh, Anuj. Uh, and before I hand you back to Anuj, who's going to take us through the detail of what we're going to look at today, just kind of a quick um, look at the agenda so we're all aware of what we're going to look at. So in today's webinar, we're going to be looking at the BMC Helix platform. We'll have an overview of that. We'll talk a little bit about observability and AI ops and how they work on the Helix platform. And then we're gonna learn more about log analytics itself, the product itself. And then we have a great solution demo from Graham, who we just heard from there. Uh, and then we're, that's where we'll get to see log analytics in action. And then finally, we'll find out a little bit more about our roadmap and finish up with some Q&A uh, sections. So Anuj, over to you to take us through today's webinar. Sure. Thanks, John, again. Yep. Yeah, so the world is changing rapidly and post COVID it has moved significantly, right? And a lot of enterprises and organizations are moving towards a journey of digital transformation to achieve their desired business outcomes. But this journey is easier said than done. So it spans an area of technologies and a lot of complexity such as there's a lot of new applications being deployed on a daily basis, new architectures, microservices are being uh, available, a lot of deployments happening either in SaaS, on-prem, or in the hybrid environments, a lot of changes to manage DevOps, 
need to adapt to a faster pace of code deployments. A lot of monitoring tools have come up and hence the, um, the amount of alarms have increased exponentially. Lots of automation pieces to be uh, done and much more. So in a nutshell, it is overly complex to manage the scale and complexity and which is beyond human to really manage. And thus we need a more AI driven operations management solution to simplify our troubleshooting. And so that is why we have the Helix platform to help us with the observability and AI ops. So if you look at it at the core of observability, we collect data from different data types. We collect the logs data, the metrics, events, and topology either from our internal BMC monitoring agents or from the third party tools. And as part of our service modeling, we, uh, we define a service which may span one or more different uh, layers. It can be deployed from an application endpoint or a URL on a containerized microservice architecture on a, hosted on a server, connecting to a network device. And in case of your FinTech or banking application, we may have a mainframe uh, as well. So in a nutshell, the service has to be modeled across these different layers. And then what is required is an end-to-end -end correlation and automated topology reconciliation that we do today with our um, BMC's dynamic service modeling technology, wherein we uh, try to form the associations and relationships across these different components. And the data that we ingest get stored into our common data model onto our unified IT operations data lake, wherein, uh, wherein this data then gets uh, uh, you know, stored and then our AI ML uh, engine works on this data to look at the temporal relationships, topological uh, associations, as well as based on the past experiences. It helps us to solve some of the key uh, issues such as noise reduction by filtering out the low entropy events and clustering the similar events together into what we call situations. It also uh, provides us a root cause isolation by pinpointing the exact problems which is impacting my service as well as helping us with the service predictions to prevent outages before they impact the service. And the situations which are formed are then taken through an operator feedback wherein the operator can acknowledge them, triage them, cancel it, and even provide feedback. And then uh, we can take further actions wherein we can uh, do an automation on top of it to, uh, to self-remediate the problem or as well as create an incident to assign it to my incident manager and notify them of the uh, a problem before they impact the pro uh, before they impact the user. So in a nutshell, what we are trying to do with our overall AOPS platform is to increase the operational intelligence and drive greater value for our customers. Okay. Now, before I talk about the log analytics capabilities and uh, the value proposition it provides. Let's look at some of the market findings with regards to the log monitoring. So today we have seen that the distinction between the traditional IT monitoring and the SRE uh, or the site reliability engineering teams are emerging. Um, and um, the existing uh, or the legacy IT operations tool needs to be re-architected and redesigned to be part of the modern SRE tool, uh, tool set. And add to it the growing volumes of data ingestion. So the enterprises are ingesting tens of terabytes of data on a daily basis with some enterprises even ingesting in hundreds of terabytes and a few even approaching petabytes of data. So in this, uh, the, the fundamental problem is the escalating costs uh, to uh, manage this growing volume of data as well as the technical challenges with regards to the traditional log file integration. So the modern environments require a comprehensive observability solution to reduce the mean time to resolution. And not to forget these troubleshooting, these microservices system continues to be problematic by virtue of their highly distributed and ephemeral nature. Uh, 
now let's look at the uh, the uh, the uh, how helix log analytics is helping us to overcome some of these challenges firstly helix log analytics is available as a service on the helix platform and integrated with other services to provide a more unified and seamless experience some of the key capabilities that it provides are top of the list is the ease of log ingestion and an open platform so it provides the uh, log collectors and the collection policies to ingest logs and it leverages some of the open source technologies like the fluentes or the log station file beat uh, connectors for the ingestion and with the open platform you can ingest not just the data from the internal uh, tools but even from the third party data connectors via the open rest apis also it provides the centralized administration where you can manage the health of different connectors deployed in your distributed environment uh, today the out of the box uh, capabilities for log collection are available for different application log files for your public cloud amazon web services kubernetes syslogs windows event logs and many more next important capability is the enrichment wherein its uh, log enrichment provides necessary context to your logs data by leveraging for example the dns enrichment it helps us to convert your ip address to a host name or by using a geo ip uh, enrichment or a csv enrichment it adds a lot more meaningful data to the logs which is then useful for my search for analysis as well as for other operational and troubleshooting needs next on the list is the ability to discover search and analyze the data with with our log explorer capability it allows you to analyze logs and search on different log attributes provide filters select a time range as well as select the log attributes of interest it also provides a time series bar chart to show different log counts and the user can slice and dice the uh, information from logs by looking at the detailed view and hence get to the root cause of the problem faster next uh, on the list is providing the visualization and dashboards capabilities using our helix uh, dashboards wherein the user can create out of the box dashboards as well as create the self service custom dashboards from the logs data using our enterprise grade grafana technology today the out of the box dashboards is available for the self monitoring of your log analytics deployment for your public cloud aws syslogs kubernetes and uh, and uh, others and this dashboards provide us a more unified view to show key information from logs and focus on areas which requires urgent attention another important capability that we provide with log analytics is the uh, archival capability wherein you can to uh, wherein it provides cold storage to store data which are business critical uh, you know application logs for longer data retention before the data gets purged and thus it enables organization to you know retain these logs which can be useful for many purposes including the audit compliance and other requirements and this data can also be restored on demand for the search and analysis purpose next is on the predictive alerting uh, uh, capability wherein we let user define different alert policies for the specific conditions or the error scenarios using the uh, thresholds and once our thresholds are breached the an event is automatically generated which can then be seen in the helix operations management console and then uh, we we leverage the helix platform and the operations management advanced event management capabilities even on the uh, events generated from logs and the user can also cross launch uh, back into the log analytics in context of that uh, event for more uh, troubleshooting and detailed analysis another important piece that we provide is the ar ai ops uh, root cause isolation so in our service monitoring when we look at the data along with um, uh, in in the context of a service so uh, with ai ops it looks at it provides the advanced aml capabilities on all the monitor data including the events which are coming from logs 
So whether our uh, noise reduction or situations or root cause isolation work on all the underlying data types, including the logs. And, and most importantly, you can also do a auto automation on a log event to self remediate it or even create an incident to assign it to your incident manager for proactive troubleshooting. So this is a nutshell uh, some of the key uh, value proposition that we uh, uh, have from log analytics uh, today. Moving on. Uh, okay, now let's. Now we will look at the solution demo. So for that, I would hand over to my colleague uh, Graham to take us further. Okay, thanks, Anuj. So what I'm going to do with the solution demo is first of all go through and look at that that end-to-end -end view with the AI ops. So that how the log analytics information that's that's been gathered is. Um, analyzed within AI ops and how that gets surfaced and is consumed within the whole platform. Then we'll delve in a bit more under the covers and have a look at the actual collection of the logs, how we can extract the information and um, enrich that information, and then also visualize that information. So quite a quick tour around the, the capabilities. Obviously, after um, seeing this webinar, then uh, we can provide more details if uh, anyone needs that as well. First thing I'm going to do is show you that how the log analytics and log monitoring is incorporated in the full end-to-end -end BMC Helix operations management and AI ops scenario, because we don't just use these uh, the log analytics in isolation, although it's very powerful. When we combine it with everything else, we can make use of all of the components together. So what we're going to do is, first of all, going from this uh, top level Helix portal that gives us access to all of the different components, is to drill into service monitoring and have a look at the state of one of our services. So we have services that have been discovered within the environment. All of the individual components have been identified using discovery. We've built up a topology and we understand how those components link together, what depends on what. And we're monitoring all of those different components, looking at metrics, um, logs, events, even end user information about the um, different components. If we drill into the uh, service monitoring, we can see the status of uh, these services. So first thing we can see is that our Travel 24-7 service has an impact. It's not at 100% healthy. It's um, minor uh, severity. So it, it's not working at its, at its best. So what I'll do is I'll drill into that particular service. And we can see that um, it's identified for me the actual root cause of the problem with the particular service. And that's something that's happening on the component TS user Mongo. And it's shown me the uh, information about the events that's uh, causing the problem. Now, in this particular scenario, you can see that the problem is something that's come from, from log analytics. So it's analyzed all of the events that have come across the environment the um, information about um, uh, thresholds breached, anomalies detected, and, and so on. And we can see all those other events if we want to. We can see all of that information for the different components. But it's actually looking at what's gone on. It can show us that actually the root cause of the problem is that we've exceeded the maximum number of connections for the database. So a typical sort of message that might appear in a log file for a database. And we've picked that up and identified that as the, the root cause. Now it does that by a combination of um, identifying situations and grouping the uh, different events together for us and also associating it to the topology of our actual application. So here's the cut down view of the topology with the impacted um, components and our events for um, log monitoring are associated to this in exactly the same way as any other event. 
as you will have seen in previous demonstrations and we can expand out and actually see all of the um, components in the service model if we wanted to. So it was just really to give you that overview of how the log monitoring, once we drill in and look at uh, what we can set up, the sort of things we can do, this is just incorporated in the full end-to-end -end, uh, service monitoring and AI ops capabilities that we have within BMC Helix. One of the other things, because this is just part of the standard BMC Helix solution, then we're also able to have automation against these particular components as well. So we've exceeded the um, number of maximum database connections. If we actually have some automation available that could update the number of users for our database, then that could happen either automatically based on receiving this uh, particular alert from a, from a log file, or as I'm going to do here, I can initiate it by um, running it from this interface and we can run the automation. Now I'm also able to drill in to look at more detail about um, this information that's come from Log Analytics. So if I drill and look at this top level event, we can jump across to Log Analytics to review the actual log entries. And this will take us straight into the Log Analytics interface and actually highlight to us based on the alert that's been defined and the event that's been generated, the individual um, entries that have um, caused that alert to be generated. So we can see that here, we can see uh, the various different um, entries with the maximum number of incoming connections. And so we've got that ability to go from that high level, understanding the service monitoring, drill right the way down to the depths of what's actually being monitored, the individual log files and the data that's being collected. So hopefully that gives you that quick end-to-end -end view. I'm not going to show you how easy it is to set up monitoring of a simple log file like this so that it can be included in the AIOps solution. As you can see, the log file contains information like date and time and time zone, and then messages about things that have succeeded or whether there's errors or, or failures occurring. So a fairly typical, small, simple example log file. So how do we set that up? So let's take a look at how we set up monitoring of a log file. From the Helix portal front end, we can go in and choose Helix Log Analytics. And this takes us direct into the interface where we can drill into and analyze all of our logs as well. But this is where we also do our setup and configuration. So I'm gonna to go to the collection um, component and menu item and select connectors. First thing we need to do is install a connector or a way of collecting the information from a log file. It's very simple to do. I've got a single um, connector set up. It's uh, monitoring using two different policies. So it's listed here twice, um, but I'll just quickly run you through the process of um, setting this up. We give it a, give it a name, the uh, type, mine I'm gonna collect from a Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. Um, we can specify if we want to um, assign tags to a particular connector. And then we download the tar file and the um, install script. And once you do that, you get the tar file down onto your um, Linux box. You can run the install script. That will install it for you and connect back to your Helix instance. So there's all of the instructions are available in the interface and in the manual. It's very easy to do, very easy to configure and set up. Once you've done that, your connector will now appear in the, in the list. And you can then set up a collection policy. 
Now, if we go and look at the policy for the uh, database messages item, for example, we can go and view that. It has a name, optional description, we're collecting from a log file, and we can actually specify that we want to deploy this policy to multiple places. I've just got my one connector in this demo environment, but in large environments, you might have a policy to collect log information where you want to do the same thing across 10, 20, 30, however many different um, hosts. So you're able to um, specify the criteria of which connectors you want to associate with this policy so that it can um, apply that and pull all of that information in for you. Again, I'm keeping it simple here. I'm just going to collect from a single log file. But when we go in, we can configure it up to specify to collect from one or more log files. We can use wildcards, as you can see here. And we could also specify a directory and then exclude certain things underneath that if we wanted to. So very flexible, very easy to set up and configure. I then want to uh, specify a parsing rule as to what lines I want to pick up and what I want to do with them. So let's go and have a look at the, the parsing rule for um, this uh, get whole line. I'm actually just going to get the whole line from the um, text file. I'm going to um, get out the uh, time information that's in there using a regular expression and then um, specify that everything else is left as the message. So that's just simply what I'm doing. Now, um, there are some default formats in there in terms of Apache logs and JSON and, and other file types. So um, you don't have to define all your own regular expressions, but it's very flexible and you're able to cope with any sort of log file that um, you're presented with. Now, having decided what information you're going to pull out, you then have the option of um, filtering out some of those lines if you want to. So if you know there's lots of noise in there, uh, things that you're never going to need to um, look at, alert on, analyze, then you can just um, purely filter those out using um, regular expressions again. So we then Having set that up, we enable the policy and let it collect. And it's really that simple. It is now collecting the messages from my um, database log. Now I can go in and have a look at um, that log being collected. I come and put a couple of, because uh, I'm collecting from a number of different places. If I come and uh, make sure I'm just looking at uh, things from my uh, database messages, I can uh, view those here. So we can look at that. We can say we want to look at message. So now we can see those um, database messages that are coming in from the log file at the moment. We've got date and time, and we've got the message that we extracted. Second thing we needed to do to um, make use of this and to generate some alerts up into um, AIOps and, and BMC Helix Operations Manager is to define those alerts. So I've got a, a alert policy defined in my environment for my um, database error. So if I come and have a look at that policy, again, this is set up in such a way such that you have policies with precedence. They can apply to multiple uh, different log files. You have selection criteria. So it's very flexible, very um, easy to configure and set up using the wizards. What I've done here is we just say that uh, if it's one of my DB messages log and it contains the text ERR for error, I want to pick that up. Now, 
I've told it that uh, if over the last three minutes we see two of those, then we want to generate a critical alert, which is exactly what happened earlier, where we saw multiple of those messages and an alert was generated. Now you could specify what that alert will look like. You can use different um, fields and information from the log message. Uh, and we'll look at how we can extract that and, and do other things with that in a moment. But um, in this example, we're just gonna take that whole message and we sent it through and that alert got generated up into um, Helix Operations Manager. And you're able to also send additional information if you know about the Helix Operations Management um, e event structures, then there's different variables or attributes that can be set. You're able to do that within here as well for the alerts that are generated. So we just enable that and it's running. So it's that simple to set up the collection and set the alerts and it will do that monitoring for you and alert on particular items. I'm now going to take a look at a slightly different log file. As you can see, we've still got date and time information in here, but we've also got information about the user, an actual username, and a status. And that status relates to either someone who's logged in, they've logged out, their password's failed, or a particular action that's occurred. We're now going to take a look at the monitoring of that uh, new log file. So we're going to log analytics. So I said earlier, I've got uh, my collection policies set up and my connectors, my collection policy for my audit log is here. We can have a look at that. It's set up in exactly the same way. It's pulling it from the uh, file audit app.log and extracting the message out. So this pulls out uh, the message from the log file. If we have a look at uh, this, we're extracting the time timestamp at the beginning and then assigning everything else into the message um, attribute. So fairly standard. So that's all good. We're collecting that information it's being gathered for us already. We can look in the Explorer interface. If we go and find our audit log information, filter that down, and we can just go and say we're going to look at uh, the message that's come out. So we can see all of those exactly the same as you saw in the log file just now, which is great. But we want to be able to do some more analysis on the data, maybe split things up. As you can see here, there's lots of different fields and these are very dynamic. You can add whatever fields you like. They can be made of individual words or phrases or numbers that are from the log file or they can be concatenations of them. You can structure it however you like. So what I want to do is actually um, get the user and put that into a field and get the actual status and put that into a field so that I'm able to do other things with it. Now, it might be for alerting purposes, it might be for visualization purposes, but the ability to actually get that information out means that we can then do that additional analysis on it. So what I can do is go to field extraction. Got uh, one set up that will allow me to extract those fields from that message. I'm only going to apply this particular policy to my audit app log. Again, flexible enough such that you can have policies that are reused across multiple scenarios where the criteria matches. And we can provide a example of the field. So the message field just contains the, the user colon and username and then status colon and status code. What I've done is defined a regular expression 
so just standard regex expression that will extract the information for me and what I'm doing is saying in this example that we should see the words user colon I then want to extract a field called user made up of actual uppercase and lowercase characters until I find uh, the next blank so I've got a space and the status and then I'm also going to extract the status which is a two digit code so I can put that in here and using the example I've put up there I can then test it do an extract and I can see that in this example I'm going to get the user Graham and the status of 02 which is exactly what I want and then that allows me to create those extra fields separate from the individual message so now if I go back and look at my explore view and if we then filter again on our integration name to look at just the audit log and we'll put the message up so that we can see that but what you will also see is we have a user and a status field and those have been extracted from that message for me and that's happening continually so I've now got a particular field called user that has my usernames in a particular field called status that has the status of the information from each of those log entries which gives me a lot more capability to start analyzing that and looking at that information now going one step further than that if we want to actually visualize it and look at it and have something meaningful we want to translate or enrich this status from that number through to a number that's more meaningful The way I can do that is by providing a mapping file. So I've got an example here that, for example, the status one is an expired password. Status two is logged in successful. And what I want to do is tell Log Analytics to enrich the information as it collects it so that it's there all of the time and available to make sure that then when we're analyzing the information, we have actual meaningful text there that um, people can understand so the way we do that is under enrichment so in enrichment we can specify a source which is the actual um, source in this sample csv file that um, provides that enrichment for me and i upload my csv file and then I specify out of the, the headings that are in there that which one is the source field that I want to match. So status, which is the 010203, and then the actual enriched field that I'm going to generate is called status text. So I've done that, and then I define a policy, again, reusable and selectable across multiple different uh, use cases so if we come in we've got a name description precedence so um, if we've got multiple policies that match the same criteria you can decide which order they're uh, applied in and then we specify the actual um, enrichment source the source field from the log file so we extracted a field called status which was the number 010203 and we're going to match that in our csv file and the target field we're going to generate is called status text and so this policy is enabled now that we've done that we can actually go back into explorer and see the results this time i will come in and i will select our integration our audit log so we're just seeing those messages and i won't bother picking up the whole message because we know user and status are being set for us 
but we can now see we've got a status text. And what you'll see now is that for each of those different statuses, we've got the actual meaningful words associated with that. So it means when we're looking at this information, we can understand it. Again, a very simple example, but hopefully gives you a bit of food for thought in terms of things that can be done. It's not just about pulling out the log file information and um, putting it into uh, variables or um, attributes. We can enrich it, we can put additional information in there and make it meaningful. So once we've got all of that, what else can we do with it? Well, we can obviously alert on that. Uh, things like failed with incorrect password. You might want to alert every time the same user has um, failed with an incorrect password more than 10 times in a given period. All of those things are um, perfectly possible with what I've shown you with setting up the alerts and so on. Other things we can do is actually start looking at visualizing this data and analyzing it. And again, in a very simple um, illustration, I'm just going to have a quick look at a dashboard I've built, which can sit on top of the um, log information. Here we can see how we can take that underlying log data and use the fields that we've split up and actually visualize the information. So for my particular log file over the last hour, I can see the breakdown of activity across different users. I can see the actual log file information in here. I can see the breakdown by um, successful logins, successful logouts, and then the other different types, the failed and expired passwords and so on. And then I can see a breakdown also across time. And if I wanted to filter it down further, for example, if I just wanted to look at what an individual user was doing, I, or multiple users, I can do that as well. And I can select that one user and see the information about them, the different activities that have been performed, or I can select multiple users and just cut it down to them. So there's lots of different ways we can then interact with the data, having collected it from our log files. Now just bear in mind that what I've shown you is very simple log files, just individual log files. The beauty of this is the power of being able to take all of that information from across multiple different sources, different servers, different components, lots of different log files, pull it all together and do all this manipulation in one place for you to be able to alert on it, visualize it and analyze it so that you can make use of all of that rich information within the log files. Thank you. Wow, nice. So after the fantastic demo that we have, now let us let me take this time to just give you a preview of what, uh, what are the key strategic focus areas that we are working on with regards to enhancing our log analytics. So, on, so th there are four essential to, um, you know, bucket areas on which we want to focus on as we uh, work further in this journey. One is the top of the list is the around our machine learning and analytics, wherein we want to continue to invest on it and provide a lot more value add and AI uh, driven uh, insights on the logs data. So the top of the list there is providing the anomaly detection capabilities, wherein we want to find the rare events as well as the outliers from the logs and then generate the events dynamically without uh, intervention from, uh, uh, from an operator or an expert. Next uh, piece of the, key, uh, of the focus area is around the platform, making sure that we are using the latest and the greatest platform. It is scalable and performance, and we have seen the increasing amount of um, you know, complexity and the ingestion rates. So we want to make sure that the platform is uh, performant. Next on the uh, uh, next focus area is around the log enrichment, wherein we want to extend the current enrichment capabilities to on uh, for other public sources, as well as the private sources, including the on-premise deployments, to provide a lot more uh, meaningful and valued context to be able to troubleshoot the logs. And last but 
very very important for us is around the uh, log integration so we want to continue to invest on uh, providing out of the box uh, ingestion and configuration capabilities with the cloud container databases firewalls and other data sources for the ease of our, our log ingestion thanks uh, anush and thanks for taking us through that uh, presentation it was really uh, insightful and i think we all learned an awful lot of Okay, so thank you um, for presenting today. I know we've both got Anuj and John on the call today. So we don't have any questions at the moment, John, um, but maybe yeah. um, a couple of topics that came up from your last session, which is what we've played today, yeah. might be a good starting point. Yeah, absolutely, Samantha. And I think, um, you know, we've uh, ran a number of these uh, log analytics, um, I guess, webinars over the last number of months. And common kind of questions we do get asked is around things like ingestion. You know, people might be faced with a situation where they might have infrastructure or global operations everywhere that generates large volumes of data. Um, so they're always asking us, like, how can you get this data back into um back into their log analytics solution? So I guess this question is for you, Anuj. When it comes to like uh, ingestion, how does our log analytics solution handle uh, ingestion? Okay, yeah, um, John, hope you can hear me. Uh, well, that's yeah. a fantastic question. Uh, so uh, so within BMC, we provide this open and scalable data lake or the Helix platform, so to say, wherein we, uh, we ingest the data, all of our observability data, including the logs data. So uh, from the very start, we are, uh, you know, uh, it's an open platform, which means the users or uh, the operators can ingest the data from any sources from by themselves or by using the uh, BMC provided log uh, ingestion capabilities. So as we have seen in the demo, we provide this, um, you know, log connectors to beat on your windows, beat on your Linux, beat uh, the containers and the dockers. We provide you the, those capabilities to ingest the logs from these different um, sources using these connectors, provide a centralized connector management capability to be able to see the how these connectors are de deployed in your distributed environment, what is the health status of those connectors. And then by using our intelligent collection policy, you can configure these connectors, be able to define the rules to parse it, to uh, rules to uh, filter the data. And then all this data is then processed, uh, you know, extracted, the key fields are extracted, and then it is stored into our log store, which is again be, uh, uh, based on the latest and the greatest open source technology. Yeah, so in a nutshell, uh, by leveraging our uh, whole, uh, scalable open Helix platform, we, uh, you know, we ingest the data, the observability data, including logs, in context with other data, whether it's the metrics or the events or the topology, to provide a in-context diagnostics and troubleshooting. Yeah, that, that makes sense, uh, Anujan. If I think about it, these large companies, or large infrastructure when they've when they've got these large volumes of data they've got to pull it back into one source to help them aggregate it make sense of it and actually make the data work um for for them which is uh which makes absolute se uh, sense there one question again if i think back to our previous webinars our previous presentations uh, around the solution we do get asked right around um our licensing and pricing models. Um, can you maybe talk to that just for a moment or two as well? So if we've got a customer who's on today and they're interested, oh, how is this licensed or how is this priced up? Could you maybe uh, clarify that for people on the call today? Yep, sure. So uh, see, within BMC, we have worked uh, um, to make our pricing model actually simple. So at, at the IT operations management suite level, we provide these standard and advanced uh, bundles. So what that means is all your, uh, you know, operations management solutions, be it your uh, events and the uh, uh, um, uh, monitor, BHOM, AI ops, log analytics, your discovery, and uh, parts of your intelligent automation capacity, they all of them are bundled into, you know, these standard and advanced depending on the capabilities. So that makes it for the users. They don't have to really worry about these point play, you know, licensing, whether I have the license for this or not. So essentially because uh, we provide this whole integrated and seamless, um, you know, platform and solutions. So that is where, you know, uh, this is a very um, easy uh, way to, you know, uh, 
license your uh, uh, the BMC uh, products. In addition, even for you know, in uh, in addition to that, we do provide uh, you know uh, a couple of uh, uh, additional SKUs, uh, so to say, for the log analytics. Wherein, if you are you know, if you want to ingest data for uh, greater um, for more duration. So, uh, you know, by default, there's a three days of uh, duration. So you can, uh, you know, uh, have those queues to retain your data for 30 days in your SaaS environment. And even if there, uh, there's a requirement for your audit compliance and other use cases wherein you still need to retain data even greater than 30 days, uh, then you can go for the cold storage capability. So uh, we have a SKU available, uh, licensing available for that, wherein by uh, leveraging that you can uh, retain uh, your data. For longer duration, yeah. So that's uh, yep. uh, what we have for the licensing. I think everyone loves a straightforward mm -hmm. licensing model. When you're talking about things like standard and advanced, and you know, people can get their head around that. Long, complex pricing uh, licensing models can be can be difficult uh, to get your head around. But and I think it's great as well the flexibility of those additional SKUs to give you that extra storage type as well. So that sounds really really good. Um. Okay, and then look, just one other question that we tend to kind of get comes up uh, quite a lot. And I guess it's to talk about, around our predictive alerting kind of solution and how it leverages machine learning um, and, you know, anomaly detection. So I'm referring to here, uh, Anuj, like static thresholds. Could you maybe um, take people through how we adopt and use static thresholds with this log analytics solution as well, because obviously AI ops and machine learning is such um, a topical or a hot topic at the moment, and it provides lots of great business value for customers. So just how does our solution handle that? Yeah, again, that's a very, very um, good question. So uh, see, traditionally, the way operations have been running is, you know, there are uh, those subject matter experts who are manning your operation solutions. Okay, so typically the way it has been happening is users know what is the threshold they want to apply. Okay, whenever my CPU utilization is exceeding beyond X percentage, then I want to be alerted. Or whenever the number of these errors exceeds a so and so number, then I want to be alerted. That is how traditionally the alerting has been using these static thresholds. So this is something that is anyways is already available and provided also with the log analytics. But now with this whole, uh, as John, you're saying, because of this whole AI driven, um, you know, analytics and the AI driven operations thing, we are making, uh, you know, we are uh, making our software a lot more intelligent by letting, by scanning through these tons of logs and trying to find uh, those rare patterns, rare anomalies and the outliers from these logs uh, without uh, without uh, uh, any manual intervention from any uh, from an operator or a, or my SRE, so that is where we are looking at you know um, extending towards this anomaly detection, wherein we want to find these rare patterns, uh, then uh, alerts or the events are automatically generated from these logs, and then these events gets correlated into the AI ops in context of my service for the root cause isolation. So with that, uh, you know, user doesn't have to really about, you know, hey, what is the condition? What is the static threshold I have to put? It is all, uh, you know, touchless kind of experience that we are trying to, um, you know, work on uh, as we speak. Yeah, that makes, that's, I mean, customers are going to love that in terms of the value that provides. Because I guess when you think of predictive alerting, when you think of like AI ops driven root cause isolation, um, you know, when you're ingesting events from, internal or third party tools you know that all really helps to to keep um keep businesses ahead of any issues you know and helps them obviously with mean time to resolution so that's great um we they're kind of the common questions i guess that we come we've come across typically over the last um, number of months but uh if anyone has any additional questions please feel free to throw them into the chat throw them into q a whatever way you can uh get them uh to us we're happy to to address those uh as well you we know We've got a few minutes left, so I have actually unmuted, and I know a few people have had to jump off, John, but there's a few contacts still on here, so I don't know if anyone would like to raise their hand or put their questions into Q&A. Um, today's session is um, in YouTube, so I'll make sure I'll uh, send back the link out. We'll also send any questions or some of these common ones that John's mentioned we will also share today as well. So we'll just give them a few minutes. Yeah, cheers, Samantha. And I guess as um, 
people are trying to think up of those kind of questions like if i was to recap on some of the things that we looked at today as well i mean we looked at how we ha handled the log collection the open platform you know enrichment uh how we were able to visualize the the, the log data dashboards um we talked about anomaly detection alerting aops root cause isolation those type of um solutions so um we could think we covered covered a lot of ground in this one yeah and john just to add while um it may be a bit early but uh, with all this generative ai trend and the gpt based trends mm -hmm. we're also you know uh working uh very closely on that too. how do we kind of summarize these logs these uh tons of these logs data into those short summary so that it becomes a lot more easier for the user to, uh, you know, understand them and also uh, uh, reduce their time to kind of solve these problems. So that is, again, one of the top um, thing on our radar as well. Yeah, I think everyone who's paying attention to our solutions recently will see how much uh, generative AI um, features or solutions we're, we're baking into everything. It's coming on our Helix platform. It's becoming... Um, uh, a fantastic utility for our customers to use and i guess when you're when you're bright when you're leveraging G, uh, generative ai to to break it down into a language that people could understand it just helps them to get to the root cause of issues even faster so it solves lots of business problems that way you know we don't have any questions um a very shy audience this morning uh john and anuj but um what we would say is if you do have any questions and you want to reach out there is the method through communities and i will also send out the survey so if you want to put any comments in there um we do also have a, quite a few ai ops um sessions that are coming up so if you keep an eye on the helix webinar page i'm actually going to be working with john on a few others and pro with product managers along with some of his other team in solutions marketing so do keep a lookout let us know if there's any sessions that are missing um hopefully you found this one useful we do have a session as well if you've got any american colleagues uh late this afternoon so that's 5 p.m uh, gmt or bst um, so that's going to be the morning of the US. Uh, please feel free to share that. Otherwise, for everyone, have a great rest of the day. Thank you for joining and uh, thank you for our host today. Have a good day. Thank everyone. you, everyone. Cheers. Bye Take bye. care.